Hello, my name is Christopher DeLay. I'm a Premier Field Engineer for Microsoft Services. This is a third uh, video in a series of videos covering how to upgrade your PKI to Windows Server 2012. In this series, we're upgrading a two-tier PKI to, from Windows Server 2003 to Server 2012. So essentially, we're upgrading a two-tier PKI, both the Enterprise and the issuing CA. In the first two videos in this series, we perform the uh, migration of uh, the offline root CA. In, the, in these next two videos, we'll be going through and upgrading and subordinate enterprise issuing CA. And all of these videos specifically should upgrade from Windows Server 2003 to Windows Server 2012. You could also use these steps to upgrade 2008 or 2008 R2 to Windows Server 2012. So the first thing we're going to cover is backing up the issuing CA. So you're going to need to back up the issuing CA um, to help as the first part in doing this migration. So as far as this specific video, we'll just be covering backing up the specific CA components. So specifically the CA certificates and keys, the CA database and log files, the CA configuration, and the list of and the list of CA uh, certificate templates that are available on that CA. That's what we're going to cover. Um, the way that I'm going to do it in the demo is I'm going to do it kind of manually. There are definitely scripts out there that you can utilize, and I may show some of those during the video, but we're going to do it manually just to get an understanding of exactly what we're backing up. Now, in your production environment, you may have other things that actually run the CA. You may have scripts that you run to tell you whether certs expire. You may have the SMTP exit module to give you some additional information. So, you, so we're not going to cover you know, moving all those things over, but those are things that you have to take in consideration. If you have backup scripts, those sorts of things, those are things that you're going to want to take, uh, bring over as well. So you're going to want to have back those up if, if there's a way to do so. So we're going to go ahead and back up the issuing CA. So again, my environment here is in Hyper-V, so I'm going to my CA, which is on Windows Server 2003. So I said there's a couple components I want to back up. So first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go into my C drive and I'm just going to create a backup folder. In the backup folder, I'm going to go ahead and create a uh, CA backup folder. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a C, uh, config backup folder would be fine. Okay, so I have those two. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring up the Certification Authority Console. So to back up the CA, I'm just simply going to right click, do all tasks, back up CA, and click next. And select like private key and CA certificate, certificate database, and certificate database log. I'm going to go ahead and browse to my C backup CA backup folder and click next. I'm going to put a password in, which is going to protect the private key of the uh, CA certificates. So those will be exported. Obviously, if you're using an HSM or hardware security module, you'll have some other process for doing this, uh, for backing up the keys or moving those keys over. Okay, my passwords don't match. Not the first time this has happened to me, so I'm just going to re-enter my passwords here. Click next, finish. Okay, my backup is complete. If you notice in the C backup folder, there's my CA certificates and private keys are stored in this PFX file, and the database and log files are stored in this database folder. So I have that piece. There still are a couple other components I want to back up. So I will go ahead and open the uh, registry. And I'm going to go to HK, 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 HK Local Machine, or otherwise known as HKLM, System, Current Control Set, Services, and we get the Cert Serve Configuration, and I'm going to click on my CA name here. So I'm just going to right click here and click Export, and I'm just going to save this uh, to my C backup config backup folder. So I'm just going to say reg uh, config backup will be fine for a name. I'm just going to save that. So now I have the CA's uh, certs and private keys, database and log files, and the configuration. 
Next thing, I want to get a list of templates. There's a couple ways that you can do that. Um, one way is to look at here in my certificate templates and do export list. I can um, let me go ahead and browse to my backup folder here. So backup, config backup. I'm just going to say CA templates. Okay, so now if I go into my CA config backup folder, I have the backup of the configuration and I have a backup of the CA templates. So I know I had these four templates available on the CA. So again, these templates are stored in Active Directory, so um, they'll still be in Active Directory later, but I'm just making a list here so when I bring my new CA up, I can go ahead and reinstall the same templates or add the same uh, templates to the CA. So I pretty much have everything I need from a backup standpoint. Um, like I said, there is some way to automate this backup. Again, if we go to, if you just did a search for uh, Windows PKI blog, um, actually, uh, disa uh, disaster PKI blogs take you to what I'm looking for here. So my colleague Amers wrote in this blog series on disaster recovery procedures for Active Directory certificate services. And if you go to this, he has a script that will automate this backup. Okay, so I have my CA backed up now. I just want to take a look at Active Directory for a second to uh, go ahead and show you something real quick here. So all my configuration information for um, for certificate services is going to be under services, uh, public key services here in the configuration partition. So I see I have information for AIA for both my issuing and root, CDP for both my issuing and root, certificate templates, certification authorities, enrollment services which is used for actually enrolling for certificates, KRA which is used for key archival, OID, just inf OIDs are just internal information used by the CA, and we also have uh, NT auth store here, which we don't really see anything in here. You can also view those tools. I'm not sure whether I have the resource kit tools installed on here. We'll find out real quick. Okay, so we don't have the, the resource kit tools installed on here, so we can't view, we don't have PKI view, so we can't view it that way. But when we get the server um, running on 2012, I'll go through and show you what you can do there to view those same 80 containers. So the next step that I need to do now that I have my CA backed up is I need to um, decommission my CA. So the thing is I'm going to want to install, I'm going to want to build a Windows Server 2012 machine that has the same uh, host name as my existing one, as my existing issuing CA. Um, just to make things simple in terms of the migration, you don't necessarily have to do that. Um, it is going to cause you to have to do a lot of reconfiguration with some of the AIA and CDP um, locations, but um, to keep things kind of simple, I'm just going to keep the same name. Now, of course, since these machines are joined to Active Directory, I can't have two machines that have the same name, so I'm going to have to go through and decommission this CA. And it's something you're going to want to do anyways if you're doing this migration. So to actually go through and decommission my CA, let me just close out of everything here. I'm just going to go to, um, wow, it's been a while since I've been on two, so Windows Server 2003. So I'm just going to go to um, Control Panel, um, Add or Remove Programs, and then Add or Remove Windows Components. The other thing I will say is I do I believe I have the web enrollment pages installed on this machine. So um, later on when I do my reinstall in 2012, I'll be installing the web enrollment pages as well. And this is my DC, so that's why it doesn't have certificate services installed. But if I actually do go to my CA and go to add or remove programs and go to add or remove windows components see I have certificate services and if you look in the details I have web enrollment enabled so I'm going to want to reinstall that web enrollment on my windows server 2012 box if you, if you don't have web enrollment here on your issuing CA you know you don't have to install it necessarily you know if you're using the web enrollment proxy or something like that you may not have it on the CA so to uninstall, I'm just going to uncheck this box here, Certificate Services, click Next. 
And so this is going to go through uh, the process of removing certificate services. It should go through and clean up some information from Active Directory as well. So I click finish. Um, if I go back to Active Directory and go ahead and look in uh, as the edit again, we'll go back in here under services, public key services, AIA. So we, s we still see that this, the uh, AIA information in here is good, is, is still in here, which is good because we still want our search to validate. Our CDP information is still here. Certificate templates, of course, are still here. Um, my root CA is still listed here. You'll notice, however, in, enro in enrollment services, this, the uh, issuing CA was, CA was removed from here. Well, the CA is no longer available, so that you can't enroll to it. So, of course, you would want to take that. This would want to be removed from Active Directory to prevent enrollment. So, it's gone for now. When we uh, do our complete our migration on the Windows Server 2012 machine, this will get added back. So, no worries there. KRA stuff is still there. So, the only thing really got took away here is just the enrollment services object. So I've completely uninstalled certificate services from this machine. Um, one other thing I'm going to go ahead and do before I power this down is I'm just going to, since I just have a small test environment here, I am just going to, for now anyways, go through and uh, copy this back up to my DC. So I'll just save it to the C drive if it will let me. So let me just um, go to my backup here. And just go ahead and paste it in here. Okay, so now I gotta paste it in here. So now I can go ahead and shut down this machine. And then I would pretty much get rid of this virtual machine. If it was a physical machine, you'd repurpose it or whatever. But um you would definitely want to uh, basically, actually I did actually go through and miss a step here, so um, go ahead and um, bear with me here for a second. So I did actually go forget to unjoin it from the domain, so let me go ahead and power that, that up just so I can gracefully remove it from the domain. Of course, you know, one thing I could always do if I, if I didn't really plan on bringing it back on, I could always go into... Uh, Active Directory users and computers and again you'll notice that I do have a small environment here so this is in computers if I didn't plan on bringing it back up I could just go ahead and delete it and that would get rid of it and then I could bring my other machine up but since uh, you know I have a small environment here it's pretty quick to get things powered on and off we'll just go through and uh, re remove it the normal way So I'm going to go ahead and log on. Just going to go ahead and go to my computer properties here. Computer name, change. We'll just call it. Uh, we'll just take it out of the domain for now. And uh, can we change the name? I believe we can change the name at the same time. So we'll just call this uh, dcoms. Dcom. Commission CA work group work group. Okay, so just ask me for my administrator account here. So I go ahead and put that in. that's gone through and been removed from the domain so I'll just click yes to restart here so that was the last step that we had to do in this process so basically what we've gone through and done in this video is we've gone through and we have backed up the existing enterprise CA we um, then after we had that backed up we went through and um, uninstalled certificate services and then removed the machine from the domain so now what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to go ahead and build out a Windows Server 2012 box I'm going to give it the same host name as this CA or the previous CA and go ahead and join it to the domain and so in the next video we'll cover actually um, migrating certificate services to that Windows Server 2012 machine and the steps involved in that. 
All right. Well, thank you for your time. See you next time.